YouTube channel. So our topic for today will be all about accounts payable and notes payable. So we begin by discussing accounts payable. So as we all know, accounts payable, these are actually what? These are actually trade payables. Si big sabi ng trade payables, these are the payables that came from the ordinary course of business operation. Ibig sabihin, right, kapag bumili ka, for example, ng inventory, since inventory is used to produce what? To produce finished goods or pwede naman kapag merchandising ka, these inventories are to be sold in the ordinary course of business. See to it now that that transaction, right, is in the ordinary course of business. So, kapag bumili ka ng inventory and then hindi ka nagbayad ng cash, no, but Ah, uh, ang anong ginawa mo? Inutang mo yung inventory on an open account, no? Ibig sabihin, hindi ka rin nag-issue ng promissory note. So if you bought an inventory and you did not pay cash and you did not also issue in uh, a promissory note, see to it na open accounts po ang tawag natin doon. At itong mga open accounts na to nagre-result to accounts payable. Are we good? So accounts payable since trade payables nga tong mga to, see to it na may rule tayo dito. Ano yung rule? These payables are considered current if what? If these are expected no to be realized or sabihin na nating paid within one year, again within one year or what we call the normal operating cycle, right? Whichever is what? Whichever is longer. Ibig sabihin, hindi po one year ang tinitingnan natin dito. But instead, tinitignan din natin yung normal operating cycle. So sir, paano kapag itong mga accounts payable na to due, right, uh, sabihin na natin after 3 years, automatically po ba non-current assets na sila? Hindi pa din. Because if the normal operating cycle is sabihin na natin 5 years, kagaya ni Honda, right, because normal operating cycle of Honda is 5 years, si to it na kahit na after 3 years pa bago mag-mature yan, it will still be classified as a current liability. Ano ba? Eh sir, ano ba yung normal operating cycle na yan? Well, kapag sinabi natin normal operating cycle, from the word itself, no, it is actually a cycle. It is a cycle from cash to cash. So, cash will be used to acquire raw materials. So, bibili tayo no, ng mga raw materials and then anong gagawin natin? These raw materials will be requisitioned to production at magiging finished goods po yung mga yan. Tama ba? Then, anong mangyayari sa mga finished goods na to? This finished goods will be sold so magiging accounts receivable po yung mga yan at itong mga accounts receivable na to ah uh, makukolekta natin so magiging cash ulit sila. So ang ibig sabihin ngayon if we are actually Honda since ang mga kotse ah uh, normally nakokolekta yung cash price no within 5 years because konti lang or madalang lang yung nagka-cash. Expect eh uh, expect na 5 years normally ang tinitake ng mga tao. So, if the normal operating cycle of one day is 5 years, even though after 3 years pa, magjuju yung accounts payable na yan, eh current pa din po yan. Nagkakaintindihan ba tayo doon? Actually, wala pa akong nakita, no? Wala pa akong nakita na accounts payable na what? Accounts payable na kinonsider as non-current. Well, pero possible yun. Sir, paano yung maging possible? Possible yun if the normal operating cycle is just 5 years and then bigla-bigla, no? Itong accounts payable na to is expected to be paid after after 6 years pa. So, if that's the case, magiging non-current siya. Pero, bihira lang yung ganun. Maluanag ba? Ngayon, ganito. Since this is a liability, normal balance, no? Once again, the normal balance of accounts payable, always remember is credit. Okay? Because lahat ng liabilities... Of course, normal balance is credit. Eh sir, pa, paano kapag nagkaroon ng overpayment? Kapag nagkaroon ng overpayment, possible na magkaroon ng debit balance of accounts payable. But see to it na itong debit balance no, in accounts payable account is not to be offset. no. Once again, this is not to be offset against the other credit balances of accounts payable. Hindi po yun pwede. So sir, paano mo ipipresent yung debit balance ng accounts payable? This will be presented as part of the current assets. So, makukonsider po yan as part of the current receivable natin. Anag, once again, kapag may debit balance, hindi mo yun pwedeng i-offset. Kailangan mo yung i-present as part of the total current liable, ah, current assets. Okay? Then, the one last thing, no, dito sa accounts payable po, si it na meron po tayong tinatawag na shipping terms. Sir, ano yung shipping terms na yan? Well, na-discuss ko na to 
uh, in on our other wagers, tama ba? Which is hanapin mo na lang no, nakalagay doon. Shipping terms ata, mga ganun. We good? So meron ng dalawa, i-rediscuss natin dito. Ano yung dalawa, sir? Meron tayong tinatawag na freed on board shipping point. Okay? And then meron tayong tinatawag na freed on board or FOB destination. Eh, sir, isn't it pang inventory and pang uh, receivable po yung topic na yan? Well, yes, pero minsan pwede rin siya magamit dito sa accounts payable, no? Sir, papaano? Well, kailangan mong malaman when to recognize accounts payable. So, see to it that receive uh, accounts payable rather. So, see to it that we will only recognize accounts payable when there is already a transfer of ownership. Once again, accounts payables, no? will only be recognized when there is already a transfer of ownership. Ay, kailan ba nagkakaroon ng transfer of ownership kapag shipping point? Kapag shipping point, there is only a transfer of ownership kailan? At the point of shipment. At the point of shipment. Ibig sabihin, pagka-ship pa lang, no? Pagka-alis pa lang kay seller, meron na tayo agad-agad utang. Sir, bakit? Because pagka-alis pa lang kay seller, even though hindi pa natin nare-receive yung mga goods, si tweet na tayo ng may-ari ng mga yun, therefore at the point of shipment, we already have a accounts payable. Ano ba? Pero kapag FOB destination, there will only be an accounts payable kailan? At the point of what? At the point of receipt or at the point of destination. Ibig sabihin, hanggat hindi mo nare-receive yung mga goods, there will be no accounts payable. Ulitin ko, kapag FOB shipping point, pagkaalis kay seller, may utang ka na. Pero kapag FOB destination, hanggat hindi mo nare-receive yung mga goods, wala pa po tayong accounts payable. Okay? So, to put into problems all these concepts, let's move on to illustrative problem number one. We good? So, here the balance of Pepper Company's accounts payable account on December 31, 2021 was 1,225,000. Net! Pag sinabi natin net, Ibig sabihin ng word na yun is that something, right, is already deducted from, once again, something is already deducted from the 1,225,000. And that's the 25,000 debit balances, no? Pero sabi natin kanina, no, sabi natin, we cannot offset, again, we cannot offset debit balances. Ibig sabihin, illegal yung ginawa niyang pagbawas. Net, sabi niya, so nabawas na, no? So, ibig sabihin, from the unadjusted balance, no? From the unadjusted balance of, 1,225,000 What we'll do is Ia-add back natin yung debit balance na natanggal So plus natin yung 25,000 pesos Okay Now before the following information was considered daw Bullet number 1 Goods ship FOB destination On December 21, 2021 From vendor From a vendor to the company Were lost in transit Pero hindi yung tinitignan natin Accounts payable tayo dito Hindi inventory no Ibig sabihin Alamin mo kung may utang na ba tayo. Okay? So, FOB destination ito. Ibig sabihin, kapag FOB destination, ang tinitingnan? Point of destination. Okay? So, kailan ba natin yan na-receive? The invoice cost of 45 was recorded by the company. Pero, once again, ang tanong, kailan ba natin yan na-receive? Na-receive natin yan? Never. Sir, bakit? Nawala eh. Lost in transit. Ibig sabihin, dapat wala tayong utang dito. And nung sabi ng company, the cost of 45,000 was recorded daw, pero dapat bawal. Sir, bakit? Kasi nga, right, hindi pa po sa atin yung goods. Hindi pa natin nare-receive, so wala pa dapat tayong utang. Okay? So, ibig sabihin ngayon, we have to deduct the 45,000. Okay? Second bullet, goods were in transit from a vendor to the company on December 31, 2021. So, in transit ulit, hindi pa nare-receive, no? The invoice cost was 60 and the goods were shipped FOB shipping point. So, see to it, nakapag-shipping point, the point of shipment yung ating tinitingnan. At kailan siya nip? Where ship, FOB shipping point, on December 28. So, ibig sabihin, may utang na tayo dito. So, alamin natin kung nasama na ba, no? The company received and recorded the goods. Kailan? On January 6, 2022. Ibig sabihin, wala pa siya sa 1225 kasi January pa lang siya, may record eh. Ibig sabihin, we have to add now that 60,000 pesos. Very good. Now, third bullet. Goods shipped to the company, FOB shipping point on December 20, 2021 from a vendor were lost in transit ulit pero shipping point to. So, tingnan natin kung kailan na ship. Kailan na ship? Na ship on December 20, 2021. So, may utang na tayo dyan, no? So, alamin natin kung na-record na ba. So, sabi dito, the invoice price was 50. 
walang sinabi kung nai-record na ba, no? So, ang ibig sabihin, we'll assume na hindi pa nakarecord kasi hindi pa naman natin nare-receive. So, we'll add 50,000 pesos now. Okay? Then, last bullet, on December 27, 2021, a vendor authorized the company to return for full credit, no? Goods shipped, billed at 35,000 on December 30. So, this is actually a sales return and allowance, no? Ano ibig sabihin yan? Kailangan mong malaman kung kailan ba tayo authorized to to return the goods, no? So, dito, on December 27, 2021, pwede na natin ibalik. So, ibig sabihin, on December 27, 2021, we already, or we can already reduce the amount of accounts payable. Okay? So, magkana yun? 35,000 daw yun, no? Credit memo was received and recorded kailan? On January 6 pa lang. So, ibig sabihin, kung January 6 pa lang nai-record to, hindi pa na ibabaho siyang 35,000. Kung December 27, pwede nang may bawas, overstated ngayon yung 1 to 2, 5. So, minus 37, I mean 35,000 pesos tayo. So, magkano po ngayon yung ating adjusted balance of accounts payable? So, this is 1, 2, 2, 5 plus 25,000 minus 45,000 plus 60,000 plus 50,000 and then minus 35,000 or this is equal to 1,280,000. So, illustrative problem number one, Delta will be our final answer. Okay? So, that's all for accounts payable, no? Let's now move on to notes payable. Okay? So, pagdating, no? Sa notes payable, halos the same lang po ito sa ating mga accounts, uh, I mean, notes receivable. Ibig sabihin here, we bought goods and we issued what? We issued a promissory note. Okay? Nag-issue tayo ng promise to pay the goods, no? Pero always remember, notes payable, maybe what? Maybe trade or non-trade, no? So, pagdating sa accounts payable, always trade. Pero kapag notes payable, it may be a trade receivable or a non-trade receivable. Because pwede tayong mag-issue ng promissory note kapag bumili ka ng equipment. Pwede ka rin mag-issue ng promissory note pag bumili ka ng inventory. Pag bumili ka ng equipment, not in the ordinary course of business yon, kasi hindi mo naman yun ibebenta eh. Ibig sabihin, non-trade yon. Pero kapag bumili ka ng inventory, nag-issue ka ng promissory note, that's a trade receivable. No? Nagkakaintindihan ba tayo? So ngayon, ganito, bibigyan kita ng apat na klase ng notes payable para kumpleto, right? So hindi mo ito makikita sa kahit na anong libro, so you have to listen very carefully. No? So una, so lalagay ko muna dito, notes payable. So first column natin, no? will be notes payable. Okay? Then, nilalagay ko dito, initial measurement. So, meron tayo dito initial measurement na tinatawag. Okay? Anong kasunod? Kasunod will be the subsequent no measurement. Ibig sabihin, magkano natin siya ipipresent sa balance sheet. Next will be the computation of interest paid and possible na hindi po yan pareho sa interest expense na ating i-consider. So, we have five columns here, no? So, start tayo sa unang klase. First, is yung tinatawag ko na short-term notes payable. Again, meron akong tinatawag na short-term notes payable. Sir, ano yung short-term notes payable na yan? Well, eto lang naman yung mga notes payable that are expected to be paid within one year. So, kapag one year lang, no? Once again, kapag within one year lang, babayaran itong mga to, situate na short-term notes payable lang din po sila. Okay? So, initial measurement of these uh, short-term notes payable will be equal to face value. But don't get it wrong, no? Pwedeng-pwede po natin yung present value. Because ideally, once again, ideally, or the most theoretically right, uh, correct measurement of any liability is at present value. So, dapat naka-present value yan. It's just that. Right? Kapag one year yan, minsan allowed tayo na hindi na yan i-present value. Sir, bakit? Because the effect of discounting it to present value is just immaterial. So, ang ibig sabihin ngayon, pwede natin siyang i-measure at face value. But once again, theoretically correct measurement will be present value. Okay? Subsequent measurement will also be at face value. So, naka-face value pa din, no? Interest paid, on the other hand, will be equal to the face amount times the nominal rate. Okay? So, ibig sabihin, yung coupon rate or stated rate of interest lang ginagamit. Then, interest expense is just the same. Phased amount times nominal rate lang po ito. Pero, syempre, kailangan mo pang i-consider yung time, no? Because interest is always based on the passage of time. So, ganun lang kadali ang short-term 
notes pay account. Okay? So, punta tayo sa pangalawa. So, ano yung pangalawa? Meron tayong tatawagin na long term. So, meron ng long term, no? Long term, mga bahaba to. Interest bearing, okay? Long term interest bearing, notes, payable, okay? Not bearing, again, not bearing a realistic rate. Okay? So, sir, anong ibig pong sabihin yan? Realistic Rate. Sir, anong ibig sabihin yan? Ang ibig lang sabihin yan is that the nominal rate, no? Once again, the nominal rate is actually not uh, equal. Not equal, rather. Not equal. Sige. Bearing muna. Tanggalin mo yung not. Alright? Tinanggal ko yung not. Ulitin ko. Long-term interest bearing. Notes payable bearing a realistic rate. Para muna hindi tayo maguluan, no? So, ibig sabihin to, pag nagbabear siya ng realistic rate, nominal rate is equal to the effective rate. Okay? Sir, anong pinagkaiba ulit ng nominal rate effective? nominal rate is actually the rate uh, that is stated on the promissory note. Kaya tinatawag din niya na coupon rate or stated rate. While effective rate is the market rate of interest or the yield rate. Okay? So, kapag equal yung nominal at effective, see to it na naka-face value pa din po tayo. Okay? And then, subsequent measurement will also be equal to face value. Sir, bakit? Because kahit na present value mo yan, face value is equal to the present value. Okay? So, if that's the case, interest paid is also equal to face amount, no? Times the nominal rate, then interest expense will also be equal to face amount times the nominal rate. Kasi nga, alright, pareho lang yung nominal at effective. Okay? So, punta tayo sa pangatlo. Pangatlo will be the long-term interest bearing. Again, long-term interest bearing notes payable, but this time not bearing. Again, not bearing a realistic rate ibig sabihin this time no effective rate or the nominal rate muna nominal rate is not equal to the effective rate okay so if the nominal rate is not equal to the effective rate see to it that the initial measurement here will be equal to the following no in the order of priority number 1 will be what number 1 will be the cash price equivalent again number 1 will be the cash price equivalent kung ano man yung binili natin, no? So, kung bumili ka ng equipment, given yung cash price equivalent, that's it. No need to compute for present value. Okay? But if cash price equivalent is not available, that's the time that we'll use what? That we'll use the present value of the note. So, hindi na tayo dito naka-face, no? Maliwanag ba? Then, subsequent measurement will be what? Subsequent measurement will be the amortized cost. Again, the subsequent measurement po will be the amortized cost. Nagkakaintindihan ba tayo? Then dito, magkaiba na ang interest paid at interest expense. Interest paid will still be equal to face amount times the nominal rate. Okay? But with regards to interest expense, it will be different. It will now be the carrying amount at the beginning times what we call the effective rate. Alright? So, nung napansin mo, itong number 3 na to para siyang bonds, no? So, ang ibig sabihin, if you want to know more about this third classification, you have to watch first bonds payable. Nagkakaintindihan ba tayo? Right? Because, syempre, sayang yung time. If uulitin ko lahat ng na-discuss ko sa bonds, once again, this number three classification is just the same with bonds payable. And we have a discussion, no? Separate discussion about bonds payable here on the same channel. Okay? Then, number four. Number four, number four will be the long-term non-interest-bearing notes payable. Ibig sabihin ng non-interest-bearing, wala po silang nominal rate, no? Ibig sabihin dito, nominal rate is equal to zero kasi wala nga nominal rate, eh. But effective rate is not equal to zero. Never magiging zero yung market rate of interest natin. Ibig sabihin dito, hindi po pareho, no? Again, nominal rate and effective rate aren't equal. To be honest, nominal rate is always less than the effective rate, no? So, ibig sabihin dito, para siyang number 3. The measurement will be number 1, the cash price equivalent if given. Okay? And then, number 2 will be what? Number 2 will be the present value. Okay? Then, subsequent measurement will still be, no? The amortized cost. Okay? So, ano yung amortized cost? Note ka nga ng bonds payable, dun ko tinuro yun. Okay? Interest paid, same thing. Phase amount times the nominal rate. Again, phase amount times the nominal rate. Then lastly, interest expense will be equal to carrying amount beginning times the effective rate. 
Ibig sabihin, pareho yung number 3 at number 4. The number 1 at number 2 yung pareho. So, to discuss these concepts, no? And to put these concepts into the problems, let's move on to the illustrative problems. Okay? We'll start with illustrative problem number 2. So, here, in illustrative problem number 2, Pepper Company borrowed 1 million on October 1, 2020 by signing what? A 1 million 12% 7 month note. So, ang ibig sabihin dito, short term lang to. So, initial measurement will be the phased amount of 1 million pesos. So, requirement number 1, how much is the initial measurement of the notes payable? Final answer will be equal to 1 million pesos. Okay. Number 2, how much is the interest expense at the end of 2020? Once again, kapag short term notes payable, interest expense and interest fees paid are just the same. Magkano po yung interest paid and interest expense natin? That's equal to the phase amount times the nominal rate. Tama ba? Okay. So here the phase amount no will be equal to 1 million pesos while the nominal rate is 12%. So the annual interest is 120,000 but see to it no na October 1 lang natin to in issue. So ibig sabihin 3 months lang po ang lumilipas. Eh sir 7 month yan. Huwag mo pansinin yun kasi yung 4 months dyan sa 2021 pa po yun ma-expense ma or may incur. So for the year 2020 we only incurred uh, 3 months interest si to it na 120,000 times 3 over 12 or 30,000 lang ngayon yung ating interest expense. So, requirement number 2, 30,000 will be our final answer. Okay? Then, requirement number 3, how much is the carrying amount of the note on December 31, 2020? One-time payment lang yung note, no? Ibig sabihin, wala naman tayong binabayaran dito. So, kung hanggat hindi pa nababayaran yung note after 7 months, is it to it now? na subsequent measurement or the carrying amount will still be equal at phase amount because initial and subsequent will be equal to phase amount. So that is the discussion of short-term notes payable. But we also have one more problem no, for short-term notes payable. So we'll now move on to illustrative problem number three. So as I said a while ago, right, ano sabi ko kanina? Initial measurement of notes payable will be phase amount. But the theoretically correct uh, concept or way on how to initially measure short-term notes payable is at present value. So, dapat lahat ng notes payable, no, naka-present value po. Ang ibig sabihin dito, alright, kailangan, kung may way, kailangan natin silang present value, especially if may way tayo. Paano pag walang way, sir? If walang way on how to get or compute the present value of short-term notes payable, doon lang natin gagamitin yung face value. Because once again, the effect of this count is just immaterial. So, okay lang din yung face value. Pero mas tama yung present value. That's why here in number 2, see to it na kung walang way kung paano makompute yung present value kasi wala namang effective rate na given, hindi na tayo nag-present value pa. Pero dito sa problem 3, naglagay ako. No? So, illustrative problem 3. On May 1, 2029, Pepper Corporation purchased a piece of equipment from Rain Company by issuing what? By issuing a 14% one year note for 320,000. So one year lang din to, therefore short term notes payable. There is no equivalent cash price for this equipment, but the market rate of interest on similar notes is 8%. So as you can see, magkaiba yung effective at nominal. So there is a way for us to compute the present value. So magpa present value tayo dito kahit na short term lang. Okay? The present value of one using 8% for one period is equal to 0.925. Nine. Ay ba tayo doon? So dito, compute muna natin magkano ba yung interest payable natin no? for one year. Well, this is equal to 320,000 times the nominal rate of 14% or this is equal to magkano guys? 320 times 0.14 or this is equal to magkano? 44,800. So magkano yung total payment after one year? Total payment now after one year will be equal to 320,000 that's the phase amount and the interest no, of 44,800 which is equal to 364,800 nagkakaintindihan ba tayo doon? ngayon ganito given is the present value no? using 8% for one period so compute natin ngayon yung present value because we can compute eh. so this is equal to 364,800 Times what? Times 
0.9259 because that's the present value of 1 using 8% for uh, 1 period. So, magkano ngayon ang present value natin? 0.9259 or this is equal to 337,768. So, 337,768 now will be our present value. Okay? So, what will be the journal entry on the date of issuance? Because that's the first requirement, no? The journal entry is to debit what? To debit, uh, ano may binili natin? Equipment. So, debit equipment equal to 337,768. What else? Credit notes payable. Again, i-credit po natin, no? Yung notes payable, which is equal to the face amount of 320,000. Then, the difference between the two is yung tinatawag natin na premium on notes payable. So, dito may premium, no? Magkano yung premium? That's equal to 337,768 minus 320,000 or that's equal to 17,768. Okay? Now, punta tayo sa requirement number 2. Requirement 2, prepare the adjusting journal entry at the end of the year, no? So, compute muna natin yung interest expense. Then, mamaya, compute natin yung interest payable. So, interest expense is equal to the carrying amount at the beginning, which is 337,768, times uh, the effective rate of 8%, then times kung ilang buwan lang lumipas, May 1 to. Then, end of the year ang inahanap, so that's a period of 8 months lang. Tama ba? So, times 8 over 12, so interest expense now will be how much? 337,768 times 0 0.08 times 8 over 12, or this is equal to 18,014. Okay? Now, compute po natin yung interest payable natin. So, annual interest as computed a while ago is 44,800. Ito yun, no? Kaso, multiply natin yan ng 8 over 12 kasi 8 months pa lang lumilipas. So, ang interest payable pa lang natin is magkano dapat? 44, 8 times 8 over 12 or that's equal to 29,867. Nagkakaintindihan ba tayo doon? Hopefully, nagkakaintindihan pa tayo, no? Then, any difference between the interest expense and interest payable obviously will be the amortization of premium. So, magkano yung amortization natin of premium? Amortization of premium will be equal to 29,867 minus 18,014 or this is equal to 11,853. Okay? So, what will now be the journal entry, no? Dito sa number 2. The journal entry is to debit what? Is to debit interest expense equal to how much? Interest expense is equal to 18,014. Debit uh, premium on bonds payable, again, debit premium on notes payable pa. Premium on notes payable, which is 11,853. Then lastly, credit what? Will credit, uh, anong yung credit natin? Will credit interest payable, kasi hindi pa naman tayo nagbabayad eh. Ang payment ng interest after one year din. So, interest payable muna, which is equal to 29,867. Are we good? Then, requirement 3, how much is the carrying amount of the note excluding interest payable, no? On December 31, 2029. So, dito magkano ba yung balance ng discount on notes payable natin? Beginning balance, no? Of premium pala, not discount. Beginning balance of premium is equal to 17,768. Then, nag-amortize tayo ng 8 months. Magkano amortization? That's equal to 11,853. So, ending balance now, no, of the premium on notes payable account will be equal to magkano? 17,768 17, minus 11,853 or this is equal to 5,915. Okay? So, if the phase amount is equal to 320,000, add mo lang yung premium, no? Because as we all know, premium is actually added. Pinapataas niya, eh, yung ating phase amount. So, plus premium, compute natin yung carrying amount on December 31, 2029, which is equal to 325,915. So, requirement number 3, 325,915 is our final answer. So, that's illustrative problem number 3. Okay? Now, punta tayo dito sa illustrative problem number 4. On April 1, 2028, Pepper Company issued a 3 million 12% promissory note for a machinery purchase. 
equal principal amount of 1 million so annual li yung pagbayad dito no of 1 million plus interest on the up and paid balance of the principal are payable every March 31 starting March 31 2029 walang given a effective rate so ibig sabihin right we'll assume that effective rate is equal to the nominal so nagpo-fall yan dito sa number 3 long term uh, number 2 rather long term Interest bearing, notes payable, bearing a realistic rate. Because there is no way for us no, to compute the present value without effective rate. Okay? So dito, anong mga tanong? Requirement number one, how much is the initial amount or carrying amount of the notes payable? Obviously, no, that's equal to 3 million pesos. Because if the notes bear a realistic rate, see to it na what? si to it na present value will be equal to the phased amount. Kaya that is why huwag ka na mag present value if that's the case. Okay? Requirement 2, assuming pepper company is using the calendar year. No? Pag calendar year, ang ibig sabihin yan, January 1 ang start ng taon natin and then nag end ng December 31. So assuming the calendar year number 1, how much is the carrying amount of the note on December 31, 20, 28? Well, kailan tayo start magbabayad? March 31, 2029 pa. Tama ba? Ibig sabihin dito, 3 million pa rin yung ating initial, I mean, ang ating carrying amount kasi hindi pa naman tayo nagbabayad eh. Requirement B, how much is the interest payable no? on December 31, 2028? Well, compute natin yung interest payable and at the same time, interest expense. Pareho lang, sabay na natin. No, eh? That's the phase amount of 3 million pa once again, 3 million pa rin. So, 3 million pesos times the nominal rate of 12% and then from April 1 to December 31, that's a period of 9 months. So, times 9 over 12 or magkano kaya yan? 3 million times 0.12 times 9 over 12 or this is equal to three uh, 270,000. So, requirement letter B, 270,000 is our final answer. Same with letter C. That's the interest expense na 270,000 din. Okay? Requirement 3, assuming Pepper Company is using the fiscal year. Letter A, how much is the carrying amount of the note on March 31, 2028? So, D, 2029 dapat to. Okay, hindi 2028. 2029, 2029, and then 2029. Sorry na, type So, how much is the carrying amount of the note on March 31, 2029? On March 31, 2029, nakapagbayad ka na ng 1 million. So, magkano na lang? 2 million pesos na lang din po. Okay? And then, from April 1 to March 31, that's a period of 1 year, no? Ibig sabihin, interest expense will be equal to 3 million times 12%. Since 1 year yan, hindi mo na yung multiply pa ng 9 over 12. So, this is 360,000. Tama ba? Pero, ang sagot sa letter B will be 0. Sir, bakit? Kasi, right, nagbabayad tayo every March 31 din. So, wala tayong utang na interest. Not unlike kanina, December 31, hindi pa tayong bayaran. March 31 pa lang yung bayaran. That's why sa number 2, mayroon pa tayong interest payable. Pero sa number 3, wala nang interest payable. Ah. Then, letter C, magkano nga yung expense? That's equal to 360,000. Okay? So, that's illustrative problem number 4. Okay? So, now, punta tayo sa illustrative problem number 5. So, here in illustrative problem number 5, on January 1, 2028, Pepper Company issued no, a 3 million 12% promissory note for a machinery purchase. The interest is payable every December 31, while the principal is payable after 3 years. Okay? The market rate of interest is 10%. Then, present value factor of 1 using 10% for 3 periods is 0.7513. While the present value factor of ordinary annuity of 1 using 10% for 3 periods is 2.4869. So, requirement number 1, how much is the in initial carrying amount of the note on January 1, 2028? No? So, dito, compute mo muna yung interest paid para diretso tayo mamaya. No? Interest paid is equal to the phased amount no? times the nominal rate which is 12% or this is equal to 300 60,000. So, ngayon, compute natin yung present value. Present value of principal. Then, we have present value of interest. Present value of principal is equal to 3 million pesos times, of course, one-time payment lang yun after 3 years. So, present value of 1, which is 0.7513. Then, present value of interest will be equal to 360,000. Tama ba yung 360? 
3 million times 0.12, yeah, that's 360,000. Times, every year yung binabayaran. So, ordinary annuity, which is 2.4869. Okay? So, 3 million times 0.7513, that's equal to 2,253,900. Then, 360,000 times 2.4869. Or this is equal to 895,284. Adding these two will give us the present value, no? At the same time, the initial carrying amount of the note as of January 1, 2028. Or magkano to, guys? 2895,284 plus 2253,900. Or this is equal to 3,149,184. Okay? So requirement number 1, 31. 491.84 will be our final answer. We're good. Now, put it to number 2. How much is the interest expense for the year 2028? Paano ba tayo mag-compute ng interest expense? Interest expense, isn't it, is just equal to the carrying amount at the beginning times the effective rate. So, carrying amount at the beginning is 3191. Kyo lang. 3149. Again, 3149. Then multiply natin yan by the effective rate of 10% or this is equal to 314,918. Okay? So final answer requirement number 2 is 314918. Then finally, number 3, prepare an amortization table. So how do we prepare an amortization table? First, we have date. Then, second column, we have interest paid. Next column, meron tayong tinatawag na interest expense. And once again, as this cost, so, bonds payable, any difference between interest paid and interest expense will be the amortization of either premium or discount. Then, after affecting that, we can already compute the carrying amount. So, here, meron tayong January 1, 2028, December 31, 2028, December 31, 2029, then December 31, 2030, kasi 3 periods. Eh. Every period, ang babayad po tayo ng 360,000. Okay? And then, the carrying amount at the beginning of 2028 is equal to, as computed, 3,149,184. So, 2028 muna, interest expense, multiply mo yan sa effective rate, which is 10%, 314,918 uh, nga ang lalabas dun. So, 360 minus 314,918, this is equal to 45,082. No? Premium, tayo dito. Tama ba? Kasi mas malaki yung present value sa and sa carrying amount. I mean sa face amount. Ibig sabihin, premium amortization is actually deducted. Tama ba? So minus 3149184 ang mako-compute po natin dito na carrying amount at the end of 2028 which will be equal to 3,104,102. Multiply mo ulit 'yan ng 10%, makukuha yung interest expense for the year 2029 this time, which is equal to 310,410. Then, 360 minus 310, 410. This is equal to 49,590. Okay? Then, minus mo ulit. Minus mo yan sa 3104, 102. The carrying amount at the end of 2029 will be equal to 3,054,512. Then, multiply mo yan ng 10% ulit. Ang lalabas dyan is uh, 305,451. No? Difference of the two will be equal to 54,549. Kapag may minus mo yan dito sa carrying amount, dapat around 3 million ang lumalabas. Sir, hindi siya 3 million. Yeah, hindi siya 3 million. Magkano ang lumalabas? Ang lumalabas dyan is... Uh, may difference sa 37 pesos but that 37 pesos is due to rounding off of present value factor pero mas magandang gawin mo is e-force balance mo na lang yung dulo para equal syempre okay? so that's the amortization table pero sa bonds payable isn't it tinuruan kita ng shortcut no? na yung tinuro kong shortcut carrying amount at the end of the year again carrying amount no? at the end of the year is always equal to carrying amount at the beginning times 1 point effective rate and then minus the payment no so try mo ngayon 3149184 times 1.1 1 .1. okay minus 360000 lalabas doon is 3104102 times 1.1 1 .1 minus 360000 ulit 
lalabas si 3 oh, 5, 4, 5, 1, 2, and then times 1.1 minus 360,000, lalabas is 2,999,964. May difference tayo po na 36 pesos due to rounding off of present value factor. Okay? So, that's illustrative problem number 5. So, now punta tayo dito sa illustrative problem number 6. On January 1, 2028, Pepper Corporation issued a 3-year, 4 million, non-interest tayo this time, bearing promissory note for a machinery purchase. The equivalent cash price of the machinery acquired is 3,5,529. So, ang ibig sabihin, requirement 1, how much is the initial carrying amount of the note? Our final answer will be equal to 3,5,529. Okay? Then the notes uses the calendar year as, as its accounting period. The effective rate is 10%. So, prepare an amortization table. So, anong amortization table natin dito? Same thing, no? Date times what? Date and then interest paid. Then, meron tayong interest expense, okay? And then, meron tayo ditong difference ng dalawa, which is yung amortization. Then, lastly, makukompute na natin yung carrying amount. So, here, January 1, 2028, yung starting point. 3 years to. So, December 31, 2028. December 31 to 2029, and then December 31 to 2030. Okay? So, initial carrying amount is equal to 3,5,259. No? So, multiply na. Ang interest paid, by the way, is zero. Kasi nga, non-interest bearing eh. Wala tayong interest payment, no? Pero may interest expense. Don't get it wrong. Kasi, substance over form. Walang tao magpapautang ng libre. So, 3,5,259. 259 now will be multiplied sa effective rate na 10% para makuha yung interest expense na magkano. That's 300,526. So, sir, ibig mo bang sabihin kung magkano yung interest expense, yun na rin yung amortization? That's a yes, no? So, dito, 3 million lang yung present value. 4 million fee. So, discount to, no? So, kabalik tara ng premium. Kung ang premium amortization kanina is dinididock, discount amortization on the other hand is added. So, 300,526 526, hindi 529. Tama ba? 526 plus 3,500,259 okay, is equal to magkano? This is equal to 3,305,785 or 86. Okay? Anag ba tayo doon? 85 lang. Sorry na. And then, 3,305,785 times 1.1 ulit, I mean times 0.1 ulit, makukompute na natin yung interest expense, which is 330,579. Okay? Yun na rin po yung ating magiging amortization kasi interest paid nga is zero eh. So, add mo ulit, 3305,785 plus 330,579 or that's equal to 3,636,364. Okay? And then, force balance natin this time para sure tayo na magpo 4 million. Pwede rin naman na i-multiply mo yun ng 10% pero para lang equal, no? So, 4 million minus 3636, 364. That's at, uh, that's a total of 363,636. So, dapat ang makukompute dito is 363636. Eh, sir, kapag minultiply naman yung 3,636,364 sa 10%, same lang naman, ha? Yes, tama ka doon. Ibig sabihin, walang difference dito. Pero minsan kasi meron. Kaya, finors balance ko na lang. Okay? So, that's the amortization table. Sir, yung shortcut mo po na carrying amount at the end is equal to carrying amount beginning times 1 point effective rate minus payment umaandar po ba dyan? Siyempre, it's just that payment this time is equal to zero. No? So, ibig sabihin, 3,500,259 times 1.1 lalabas na no? yung carrying amount at the end of 2028 times mo ulit ng 1.1 lalabas yung at the end of 2029 then 1.1 ulit lalabas yung at the end of 2030 okay then last problem no illustrative problem number 7 so on January 1 2028 Pepper Corporation issued a 3 year 4 million non-interest bearing promissory note for a machinery purchase okay palitan natin tong 3 million na to no kasi hindi dapat yan 3 million. I mean, hindi dapat yan 4 million. 3 million lang dapat ito. No? So, papalitan ko siya ng 3 million pesos. Kasi, 3 year lang to And then, apparently, 3 years lang din yung bayaran. Okay? Lang, guys. 3 million pesos. Ayun, di ba? Galing ko na. Palitan ko. 
Non-interest promissory note for a machine repurchase. The note is payable in installment no, of 1 million every December 31, starting December 31, 2028. The effective interest rate is 10% and the present value of ordinary annuity of 1 using 10% for 3 periods is 2.4869. So prepare an amortization table on it. Okay? So compute muna natin yung present value. So kung 1 million every year ang bayaran, 1 million times the present value factor of ordinary annuity of 1 using 10% for 3 periods which is 2.4869 now will be our present value. So magkano to? This is equal to 2,486,900. So requirement number 1, 2,486,900 two, will be our final answer. Okay? Ngayon, prepare po tayo ng amortization table. Starting with date. Then dito, meron tayo ditong payment, no? And then meron tayong interest expense. And then principal payment, yun natitira, or yung residual. Okay? Then meron tayong carrying amount. So date will be January 1, 2028. Three years ulit. So December 31, 2029. December 31, 2030, 2028 muna pala yan. Then 2029, then December 31, 2030. Payment every year is equal to 1 million pesos. So 1 million, 1 million, then 1 million pesos. Caring amount at the beginning is 2486,900, no? So interest expense, effective rate times caring amount at the beginning lang ulit. So 2486,900 times 10%, this is equal to 248,000. 690. So, kung 1 million yung payment, no, again, if the payment is 1 million, then 248, 690, yung para sa interest, magkano para sa principal? Para sa principal ngayon, is assumed to be 751,310. Okay? So, kung nagbayad tayo, no, ng 751,310, uh, ibawas ngayon natin yan sa caring amount. So, 2486,900 minus that payment, Ang makukuha natin dito na carrying amount at the end of 2028 will be equal to 1735590. Same thing, times 10%, makukuha yung interest expense which is 173559. Then minus 1 million pesos, makukompute yung principal payment which is 826441. Okay? Ibawas mo ulit yan dun sa 1735590. So this is equal to 909 149. So para maging 0 to, dapat ang principal payment ngayon is 909149. So if force balance na lang natin to para wala nang maging ano kasi may may difference diyan due to rounding off of present value factor. So kung 909149 dapat yung sa principal 1 million yung total, the interest now must be equal to 90851. Okay? So kapag ang ginawa mo dito is Yung 909,149 ang minultiply mo ng 10%, ang makukompute mo kasi dito is 90,915. Tama ba? There's a difference, no? Of, magkano yung difference dito? 90,915 minus 90,851. Or there's a difference of 64 pesos due to rounding off of present value factor. So, para wala na lang difference, finors balance ko na lang yung dulo. Okay? So, sir, magagamit ba yan yung shortcut mo? Siyempre, once again, no, carrying amount at the end is equal to carrying amount beginning times 1 point effective rate, then minus payment. So, try mo ngayon. 2486,900 times 1.1 minus the payment no, of 1 million, makukuha mo si 1735,590. Times 1.1 minus 1 million, makukuha mo si 909,149. Then times 1.1 minus 1 million, makukuha mo yung 64 pesos. That's the difference a while ago due to rounding off of present value factor. So, that's illustrative problem number 7. And that's the end of accounts payable and notes payable. So, hopefully, no, after discussing all the uh, liabilities, right, na pwede mo makita, eh, master mo na ngayon, right, lahat. So, thank you guys for uh, for watching our videos. Thank you for your, for your uh, support. See you guys on our next video which is all about leases. Eh. Start na natin si leases, no? And then, after leases, maybe punta tayo sa shareholders equity and all special topics. Doon tayo sa may hirap mag-start. Okay? So, thank you so much for attending our class. See you on our next video. Take care and God bless. Bye-bye, guys.